Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. I have been contemplating the Dragon 2 spacecraft and I like some features of it. The fact that the escape system is integrated and the service module is effectively integrated except for the solar panels of course. And yeah, that's convenient. But of course it is very heavy. And with the small area that it has at the bottom here, it can't really come back from the moon or anything. So it is basically limited to low Earth orbit, basically because of its mass to area ratio, the ballistic coefficient. So that's not convenient. Of course, it doesn't have a whole lot of delta V for moon missions either. Uh, so yeah, it does limit its usability as far as I'm concerned. However, I realized that perhaps we could widen it. And so I have come up with this. Behold the dragon wide. It is 5 meters in diameter at the bottom, basically matching the Falcon fairing, and also Orion and other spacecraft as well. That makes it easy to see what's possible. And so it has a 5 meter heat shield right now. It can potentially come back from the moon. And most importantly, that leaves room for additional fuel down here. Uh, we've got the sort of same, it's not quite the same cabin because even the upper portion of the cabin has been widened. But you can sort of tell that there's going to be more space down here for fuel. And I figured out the parameters of that. Let's take a look in Blender. So here's the craft in Blender. And basically the, the tankage mass is down here. I've modeled as a Taurus there. And the cabin, well there's the interior there and then the interior bottom, you can see it's like that. And that's really basically how it is, except it's much thinner in the actual Dragon 2 capsule. I I've seen people try and like land Dragon 2 on the moon or something like that, you know, in stock or stuff like that. But really, you don't need the whole outer bit. The cabin, with some maybe some micrometeorite protection and stuff like that, and insulation is basically what you want. Uh, so basically your craft should look like this and maybe have some fuel tanks around, maybe a toroidal fuel tank. But I'm not using all the available volume down here because there's probably plumbing and other stuff like that. But even the available volume is about 7,048 liters and I've put it in as 7,000. So 7,000 liters is what we have available, and that does give us enough delta V to do stuff around the moon. So coming back here, of course, this is a little bit, well, a fair bit more massive, even the dry mass. Um, in terms of the outer skin, we're not stretching it too much. It's a little bit more. The heat shield, of course, is much heavier because we've gone from basically a 3.75 meter heat shield to a 5 meter. Uh, so that's increased quite a lot. And then, of course, there's additional tankage mass inside. So overall, whereas Dragon 2 is generally 9.5 tons dry, and that is just the capsule bit, uh, here we uh, I've got it under fuel right now. We've got the 7,000 liters, as I said, but I've under fueled it. Uh, dry, we're 12 tons. So that is what I'm aiming for here. And wet, we could be potentially a whole 20.4 tons if we fill up all of that fuel. But if we do fill up all that fuel, I don't think Falcon Heavy can la launch this to the moon. So I'm going to half fuel it, 16.2 uh, tons. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that, I think I had it. And of this, the heat shield is a healthy 2.2 tons right now. It could be more than that. The trunk is also 2 tons. And uh, the hatch, you'll have to forgive me, that's a placeholder. I'll probably make a brand new hatch. But here it is on Falcon Heavy. Look at that. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, will it unbalance it with those fins? I don't know. I thought about making retractable fins. But uh, yeah. So the question is whether Falcon Heavy can get this underfueled as it is over to the moon. Right now, it's not reading enough delta V. But then again, it's not taking into account the, the throttling of the core and the fact that we're going to hang on to the core after booster separation, etc., etc. And, but on the flip side, it is not taking into account that we're going to be reserving fuel in the boosters in order to try and have them return. That's why we've got the grid fins and landing legs on. So it could be a toss up. Let's save, uh, risk some kerbals, not that many. 
I think uh, we're gonna go with four. It has 14 days with four crew, 14 days of supplies. And let us launch. Okay, here we go. We are bringing out engine groups controller so I can throttle down the core independently. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. And up it goes. I don't know exactly when I need to throttle down, so please forgive minor discrepancies in the, in the general goal of testing what's up there out. And throttle down. And this doesn't correspond to the actual percentage on the engines. The bottom of it, zero or maybe one, would be the lowest throttle for the Merlin engine. Sorry for not launching from pad 39A. Uh, that would have been a little bit more cumbersome at this point, so. So I'm not aiming to recover the core here. We will reserve the fuel and the boosters, but the core, I don't think would be able to return. Not if we're gonna try and get this over to the moon. Even the booster return is pushing it. And only possible because we underfueled the pod. The pod's fuel right now wouldn't be good enough to get into a low orbit around the moon, but we're aiming for sort of a lunar gateway orbit, and that costs less to achieve and then break. I forget if I mentioned, but I did up the thrust on the Super Dracos to give us at least 4 Gs with the added mass here. I'm hoping for maybe the Lunar Starship engines actually and converting the whole thing to methane and oxygen, but I'd like to get stats on those. Those would probably be better for escape thrusters on this. The landing engines that they have at the top of Lunar Starship, I mean. Okay, getting ready to shut off the boosters. I think that's good enough. Couple throttle up there, throttle up here. Uh, uh, there we go, and we can hide that now. So, one minute to spare on this stage. Okay, Merlin upper stage or Falcon upper stage. Should be. Uh, maybe if we use some of the pods fuel. I'm looking at maybe 3,000 in this stage. And that means we need an extra 100 to get over to the moon. By the way, the Super Dracos right now on this uh, give 290 seconds ISP. In vacuum. The RCS system on it uh, does better than that. Uh, about 302. Okay, well, we're barely in orbit, but we're in orbit. 2,873 for the transfer. So we'll see what we can do here. But uh, it's a bit tight. So we may need to think about optimizations. Maybe I should just carry less fuel to begin with if we're not going to use it. And reduce the tankage mass. Oh, so we could just have... Falcon Heavy be expended on this trip. Whoa, that's a lot. Hey, that could be like a Lunar Gateway Halo Orbit kind of thing. <laughs> that's my story, I'm sticking to it. Okay, uh, let's just leave it be. I don't know if the solar panel is actually getting sunlight. This might not be a great angle. Uh, it should be, though. Okay, I mean, of course I made the parts, so I have to wonder whether they're working right or not. <laughs> And not, and not the Falcon, by the way. The Falcon was made by Kartoffel Kuchin Keiki Launchers Pack. It's just the pod up here that I've made. Okay, fine. Ignition. Okay. Uh, separation. 318 we're asking for now. Okay, I want just the RCS. I don't really want the Super Dracos active. 
And we actually need to flip around from this node. So, and I would like the nose cap to be open. Yep, well, at least the RCS on here is working. So we're gonna use those thrusters to very slowly complete this burn. I could try and use the Super Dracos, but actually that's a lot of thrust and they're really hard to manage. Okay, well, our encounter is forming up, but I'm not getting the sense that we're going to have enough Delta V to actually capture and break orbit right now. So this system is going to need refinement or a bigger rocket. I'm thinking maybe the Raptor 9 rocket or Unix rocket. Maybe, maybe that would be better. Or we could adjust to Mephlox on here. Or just expend the Falcon Heavy one way or another, I suppose. Of course, it's the whole cross-feeding with the Falcon Heavy thing, which I used with the lunar, the Soviet lunar mission. But for what what I feel should be a little bit more of a serious thing, I'm gonna pass on that. Um, actually, maybe we want to make it a more tourist situation and keep. Maybe a little bit looser around the moon, but make it easier to come back afterwards. Okay, we'll go like this. I have other things to test here. Um, I didn't think it was only 100 watts of consumption. I need to check on how much the pod is using. Oh, okay, well, we've got... the solar panels seem to be doing something. Okay. Okay, so flying by the moon. There's the moon. Fairly high up, but you know, I don't know how close tourists would want to get. Doing this adjustment, it's awful close right now. Oh, we could just swing by the moon again. Well, not with the food, water, and oxygen that we have. Well, we've got so little Delta V now, I'm gonna do a waste water dump. Using the RCS like this sure does take a while though. That is a significant downside in terms of gameplay. Of course in real life it doesn't matter. Uh, we might be in trouble. Okay folks, I don't know what to say. I think I have doomed Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Val. We don't have enough to bring that periapsis down actually. Uh, we could have dumped some of the food, water, and oxygen. So, well, uh, success or failure, I, I go with it. So this time, uh, failure. We'll need to work on this system a little bit, it looks like. So, hmm, proposals will be welcome, but uh, this is the idea. The Dragon Wide. Take it or leave it. <laughs> With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.